And now, introducing the man who is truly responsible for the slick floors at Towson Sec U Arena, thanks in part to his impact on women, he is Glenn Clark. CQ. CQ? CQ. It's CQ. Why would it be CQ? Not CQ. It's CQ. I have always called it CQ. It's on you. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. That's nothing to do with the world. CQ. I saw you. I saw the grimace because, on your face. Just I was because like, you you do something. I mean, they don't spend any money with this, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But other other ways. Yeah. So it's not like a potato potato thing. It's one hundred percent CQ. It's the name of a company. They get to determine what their name is. Oh, see, I, I thought that it was like this an is, abbreviation. This is we had a, we had a situation with um, uh, Kyle where he would be like a- anybody whose name was Angel was actually on hell. And like you know, I I was a I was a dirty white man because I didn't call. I'm trying to think of who it was. Who was the outfielder that played for the Giant? Pagan, Angel Pagan, right? And he was mm-hmm. like, no, it's on hell. And I'm like, whoa, 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 chief, you don't get to decide that. You don't get to decide what someone else's name is. It doesn't work that way. I get why you think it should be on hell, like because he is of Latin descent. Mm-hmm. But if the man chooses that his name is Angel. Then that's his name. That's the way the world works. You don't get to decide what someone else's name is. Look, I a lot of people have called Ian Eagle Ian over the years because when you see I A N, you think it's Ian, but his name is Ian. That's just the way that it goes. You don't get to decide what somebody else's name is. They've decided that they're CQ. That's what they are. That's that's, that's what they are. And that's that's that's, and that's, that's uh, if their mama calls him uh, 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 Cassius, then I'm gonna call him Cassius type of situation that we got uh, going on. That is a that is a weird thing that they, that they decided because if anybody that knows the English language, S E C makes a sex you, you, sound. You keep saying this. They get to decide whatever they want to be. That's the way that it works. You're a company. You make those decisions. All right. Good morning. It is Glenn Clark Radio. I am Glenn Clark. He is Paul Valley. We are with you uh, here on a, oh, a lovely, it's a very nice Wednesday in Baltimore. we got a lot to do, uh, including a brand new show that we're launching today. I'm going to tell you more about here in just a second. So coming up on the program this morning, th- if you've been with us for a Thursday edition during football season, you know that uh, there have been times where we have literally been kicked off the air, dragging and screaming out of the studio at 11.30 a.m. We are kicked out. And we have to turn things over to a completely different show that we just also so happen to be a part of. Well, it's going to be the same thing on Wednesdays moving forward. As uh, today, uh, Pressbox launches a brand new program called Simply the Bets, starring Glenn Clark and Paul Valley. Congratulations! Yay! Um, Here's the deal. We, of course, as you know, have partnered up with the Live Casino and Hotel and the all-new FanDuel Sportsbook, and we're very excited about that. We're very happy about it. I was down there on Monday shooting some videos that you guys are going to be seeing soon. Um, looking forward to you guys seeing the work that we put in. Thanks to Gary Stein and his crew for helping us out and doing all of that. Bruce Billick and I were hard at work on Monday, and uh, thanks to uh, Paul and KZ for filling in on the show. Um, we are, you know, with with gambling now being legal in the state of Maryland, we want to bring more sports betting content. Now, I am not yet at a place where I am betting every day. I'm not there. Now, there are certain events, like during the uh, Australian Open tournament, I damn well was betting every day on uh, tennis. And there are other times that I'll probably be doing a little bit more. But I know you guys are, and we want to have you as informed as possible when you do that. It's a shame that you guys didn't. I mean, I hope you did, but if you didn't, shame on you. You should have taken my advice to go down and bet on that all-team score at least one touchdown and one field goal prop because that was a big winner, as I told you it would be. It took until the fourth quarter for the Rams to get me a field goal, and I was sweating that one a little bit, but I was very excited that uh, that one in particular hit. You can get down to Live Casino and Hotel, which is now, uh, you know, now the FanDuel Sportsbook is open in Hanover, Maryland. They still have spots available for you if you want to go watch the uh, big game there. Events at sportssocialmd.com is the website to get your res- or the email address to get your reservations in. But today at 11.30, we launch Simply the Bets, our first ever sports betting podcast here as part of what we do at PressBox, and we're looking forward to bringing that to you. But until then, we'll continue to bring you the normal fun and frolic of a Wednesday edition of GCR. Coming up in just a bit, we are going to chat with um, Kamar Aiken, former Baltimore Ravens wide receiver, and he also was with the New England Patriots, so he knew uh, that fella Tom Brady 
that uh, people seem to be uh, interested in. With. Yeah, enamored with whatever you want to call it. We will chat with um, we will chat with Kamar Aiken about Tom Brady and his legacy, and also Kamar. Kamar actually was still doing. It's funny the 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 podcast that Dan Wilcox now does with Bo Smoka for Believe was one that Kamar was doing until last season. So I know that he's spent a little bit more time with the Baltimore Ravens and um, or at least watching them being invested. So we'll try to uh, get a little bit in with him about that and Greg Roman and the whole deal. Also this morning, Drew Forrester will check in. And later on in the show, uh, Professor Robert Boland, or Robert Boland Esquire, if you will. He's a sports attorney. He's now the athletics integrity officer at Penn State. And it just so happened to be, and I've known uh, Professor Boland for a long time, I just so happened uh, earlier in the week to read something that he wrote for a website called cultureandsports.com about the situation with black head coaches in the NFL. And wouldn't you know, obviously in the last 24 hours, um, the league has kind of been rocked by this lawsuit from Brian Flores, which alleges a bunch of different things, in including um, disproportionate treatment due to race, but also, of course, you know, maybe even... I, I don't know what could be more explosive. I don't know how you measure which one is more explosive. But certainly the outright allegation that he was offered $100,000 per game to lose as head coach of the Miami Dolphins, which some of you would say, yeah, well, we knew the Dolphins were, were outright tanking. Like, we knew that. It's, it's not that simple. It's, you can say, hey, we knew the Dolphins were trying to tank, or it was clear the Dolphins were trying to tank. You can say whatever it is that you want to say. The owner of the team still can't try to get the coach to throw the games. That's, uh, imagine, it's why I always talk about these scenarios. Imagine, given how much money, we're launching a sports betting podcast today. Imagine diving into that if you're the United States government. And, of course, the lawsuit itself, explosive, the possibility of what you could learn more within discovery, even more significant. We're going to find out more about what it means for the entire league when we chat with uh, Professor Boland a little bit later on in the show. So that's all coming up today, and then we will, uh, we will have at 1130 Simply the Bets, our sports betting podcast. So with all that on the table, a couple of things. I have not been here for a normal show since last Friday. Of course, I wasn't here Monday. Then yesterday we did our college lacrosse preview. Thanks to all of you who checked that out with Patrick Stevens. So I have, I have largely not touched on a number of topics. I haven't talked since John Harbaugh spoke on Monday. I don't have a ton to say about John. I was, I was asked by Pressbox, do you want to write a column about the press conference? Frankly, I found the press conference to be much ado about nothing. Um, which, in fairness, is sort of what these press conferences are, and it's why he waited a couple weeks in order for there to like the news of to have already gotten out before he held a press conference. He didn't really say anything that was particularly explosive in regards to either the decision with Don Martindale or the decision with Greg Roman. I, I know a lot of people. There are like some conspiracy theorists who are like, "Hey, you know, he left the door open that maybe something could still happen with Greg Roman." I, yes, technically that's true. Um, I have had a couple of people who have even like thrown out a a theory that, well, maybe he knows that Jim's taking the Vikings job and wants Greg Roman back and doesn't want to fire him because that would look bad, so he's gonna let him. Maybe, I mean, maybe honestly, maybe who knows. I would think that if the Ravens wanted to move on from Greg Roman, they would have moved on from Greg Roman. They didn't have to fire him. They could have done the bit they did with Don Martindale and said, hey, we, look, we know you're taking the job with Jim, so we're just going to say we're parting ways, and then you got your job lined up. I'd be very surprised if Steve Bishotti was willing to play along with some scenario in order to protect Jim Harbaugh, right? Like, I want to hire an offensive coordinator, and I don't want it to be someone who was just let go by another NFL team. I mean, I, how fragile are you if that's what you're concerned about? But is it impossible? Nothing's what, – what did we learn from Kevin Garnett? Everything is possible. Or is uh, – Anything K is possible. Yeah, anything is possible, whatever it is. Um, is it possible? Of course, it's possible. Obviously, it's possible that there's something else that still happens. But 
it didn't seem like John Harbaugh felt like he had to go too deep into defending Greg Roman, and that's because he doesn't. If Greg Roman is back as the team's offensive coordinator next year, it's because Greg Roman's offenses have been really good. That by every measurable you could possibly imagine, Greg Roman has succeeded as the offensive coordinator in Baltimore. And again, the, you, you can nitpick and say, well, I wanted them to score more touchdowns this season. I think we all did. Probably would have helped to have had a running back in order to do that. But the idea that John Harbaugh has to go out of his way to defend why he would want to employ the guy that put together the number six offense in the NFL is nuts. He doesn't have to defend that. It would be the opposite. If you fired someone, you would have to defend that decision because they were succeeding. Now, your beliefs, your opinions that I don't think that we can't win a Super Bowl doing this or this, this isn't what you need for Lamar, whatever your opinion is, that's your opinion. It, it's meaningless. Uh, it, all due respect, a lot of my opinions are meaningless too. I'm just the guy that happens to have this microphone in front of me. Whatever your opinion is of Greg Roman means nothing. It's just your opinion. Maybe you're, you'll prove to be right. Maybe you'll prove to be wrong. It's irrelevant. It's just an opinion. There is no science. All of the measurables that we have say Greg Roman has been a successful coordinator in Baltimore. You don't think he should be the coordinator anymore. Okay, fine. You're, you have every right to that opinion. It's an obsession that we've had in this town for forever, and so I'm not remotely surprised by it. But you have every right to have the opinion that Greg Roman shouldn't be the coordinator in Baltimore anymore. But John Harbaugh doesn't need to go give a sermon on the mount or defend the decision to continue employing someone who has succeeded in the job that they have. Not necessary. It would be borderline insane for John Harbaugh to do a stump speech about why he continues to employ his successful offensive coordinator. Like, imagine John Harbaugh doing a stump speech about why Justin Tucker would be the team's kicker next year. And I'm not trying to say that Greg Roman is to, to being an offensive coordinator, but Justin Tucker is to being a kicker. Trust me, I understand. It's, it's, it's apples and oranges. But you get the concept of what I'm trying to throw out. Imagine him trying to explain why Kevin Zeitler would be the right guard next season. What you guys don't understand is that we get it. He's going to be that because he's successful. Because he's done a good job. That's the end of it. Now, for those of you that are bloodthirsty, nothing will be enough. It doesn't matter what John Harbaugh says. So why would he waste his time obsessing over it in a press conference when you're not going to like the answer no matter what? Because you've just decided Greg Roman's got to go. It's, there's nothing to be gained there. I didn't expect him to go very far with that. I, I think there would be, there, you know, some people are interested in, well, is there any, you know, disagreement? Did anybody within the organization want him to go? Well, they're not going to tell you that. It's part of the reason why I stopped covering press conferences, frankly. I think I've made it public on this show. I, the last straw for me with covering press conferences was the Steve Bishotti one when he openly lied about the quarterback situation. It used to be that Steve Bishotti was the one guy that like, I believed was telling me the truth because he didn't have to prepare for an opponent that week, and he didn't have to. So when Steve Bishotti a few years back stood up there and was asked about the quarterback situation, and he said, nah, we got bigger fish to fry. And then the Ravens went and drafted Lamar Jackson when he openly lied and participated in it. I just said, that's it. I'm not mad at them. That's their right. This, these, they do what they do. They're a business. If they think that's what's best for them is just to, to say whatever, then they can do that. But I'm just not going to participate with that any longer. It's, it's not for me. I'm not going to cover press conferences. I'm not going to drive out to Owings Mills to have people lie to me. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need that. I watch professional wrestling. I can, I can do that. Um, but that's not, I'm not mad at them. It's their business. They can run their business the way that they want to run their business. So John Harbaugh, you know, I'm trying, people are trying to make something out of what he said about the two-point conversion thing. He said exactly what he would have said a month ago. When, when everybody obsessed over the idea of, I don't, I don't like the idea that he's running around asking players. He's not really. That's theater. He knows what he's doing. He wants to show that everybody is fired up and wants to do it. And overwhelmingly, 
players are in agreement, I want to be aggressive. I want to be that team. That's who I want to be. Overwhelmingly, they want to be that team because they believe in what they're capable of doing. They believe they're going to go convert. You disagree, you disagree. But the idea, I mean, Jerry was trying to needle him. Do you think it cost your team a game? Where is that coming from? Is this idea that if you just don't go for two, you're going to win the football game? And again, Jerry's doing theater too. Like, you know, Jerry, Jerry, I, 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 I don't want to call him an idiot because he's not. Jerry's a smart guy who's been in this business for a long time. And, you know, I love Jerry. He's a friend. But somewhere meets like his actual opinions versus what can I say to try to needle a coach and get get a quote that I can run on my show later tonight. Nothing that I heard there was all that compelling. Honestly, it just wasn't. We'll hear from Eric DaCosta later on in the week. The only thing to me that's all that interesting about that is, is there any update regards to Lamar Jackson? Because that is the story of the offseason to me. The story of the offseason is Lamar, the Lamar Jackson situation. And if you're thinking, I want to push it, I want to you know, make him go back out there for one more year and, and, and see what he does, I want to see what Lamar Jackson's response to that is and whether or not he says, middle fingers, trade me. That's the story of the offseason to me is where are the Ravens in terms of Lamar Jackson and his contract. So the first clue that we might get to that will be on Friday when Eric DaCosta speaks. But if I had to bet, he'll say something super generic and, you know, we love Lamar and we're working on that and we just don't have anything to say about it right now. Do you have an opinion on what's been put out there that they offered him a generational wealth type of contract and he turned it down? I mean, th- that doesn't – we just don't know what that means. Right. Generational wealth could be – 20 million. Exactly right. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't mean anything. It's. I need to know what was on the tape. Did he t- did he have a fifty million dollar deal in front of him? He turned it down because mm-hmm. then he just doesn't want to be here, right? Like I get that, but saying, uh, oh, I need to know. I would need to know the details of what was there. Right. And Eric Costa might tell us something, or he might not. The more likely scenario is he'll dance around it on Friday, but at least he'll address it, and then we can operate with whatever we learn uh, when Eric Costa speaks on Friday. Um, as far as Tom Brady's concerned, it's time. Ta- I'm a little surprised, just being honest with you. I'm a little surprised. Um, I tried telling you guys on Saturday, those of you that were trying to pretend like Adam Schefter and Jeff Darlington and, you know, even, frankly, Lock and Four the day before were making this up. That was nonsense. This, like, notion that these reputable reporters, and you can say whatever you want. If they've gotten some things wrong in the past, that's fine. But the idea that they're just going to make something like this up is nonsense. Now, why Tom Brady... Like, wanted to deny it for a... He literally went on his own radio show the night before and said, I haven't made a decision, only to announce the next morning on Instagram that he was retired. It's a really weird bit of theater. Like, it's a very strange bit that Tom Brady's doing. That being said, it's over, and it's one more team that needs a quarterback in the most quarterback-thirsty market we've perhaps ever seen in the NFL, in modern NFL times. I, I tried talking about this all down the stretch. The idea of this is part of the reason why if I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm demanding a trade if the Ravens aren't paying me what I want right now. There are so many teams that desperately need quarterbacks. Desperately. Now add one more to that list. There were already the Panthers and Washington. There was already the Steelers. There was already whatever's going to happen you know, in Seattle if they move on from Russell Wilson. There are so many teams that need quarterbacks. There's a litany of teams, the Broncos and the the Saints, need quarterbacks. There's other teams that probably should make an upgrade at quarterback, don't necessarily need to. The Browns, the Giants, the Texans, the Dolphins. But there's a significant number of teams that need a quarterback that don't have a quarterback at all that they could look at and say, we could win with that guy. And now you add one more team to that list in the Buccaneers. There aren't enough quarterbacks to go around. The idea of playing a game with the one that you have because I think Joe Burrow might be better, nonsense, and just shows your ass. just makes you look stupid. 
playing a game with your quarterback isn't what you do. It's insane. As far as Tom Brady's career, my God, what else is there to say? I mean, it's Tom Brady. We're literally discussing Tom Brady. We're discussing, you know, perhaps the, the, the greatest quarterback. I get it. You know, however you want to parse it. Some people think that other quarterbacks are more talented and, you know, who knows. But as far as a, a career is concerned, we'll never see anything like it. I mean, we just won't. And, look, I don't like the guy any more than you do, but, you know, we have to acknowledge that. It's it's watching Michael Jordan retire. It's watching insert name here. I, I can't give it any more context. There's no possible way for me to apply more context to the retirement of, of Tom Brady than what you already know. But we're going to try to talk to some people who might. And uh, one person who's going to do that for us joins us right now here on GCR. We, of course, got to know him during his time in Baltimore, but it wasn't just Baltimore during his career. He also spent some time in New England and with the aforementioned Tom Brady joining us now. He is former Ravens wide receiver and Patriots wide receiver, Kamar Aiken, and he's back with us on GCR. Kamar, it's Glenn and Paul. It's been a while, man. Thank you so much for taking a couple of minutes for us this morning. Yes, I appreciate you guys having me on. Hope everybody's been doing well. Everybody's been doing all right. I hope the very same for you, my friend. I know you you weren't in New England for a very long time, um, but take me back. You you show up there. What do you remember about arriving and sort of already? I mean, this is a decade ago, so my God, everything has yep. accomplished <laughs> since. But what do you remember about arriving and sort of being in the presence of greatness at that point? Um, I remember uh, getting there. I already knew the workload was going to be a lot because I, I've already I kind of heard of how New England went about things and how they do things. Um, so when I got there, my, my eyes were pretty much, you know, I was, I was open for anything. I didn't have any expectations. I didn't know what to expect. Um, but I, what I would say experience-wise, my first, first person that ever introduced themselves to me was Tom. Um, full name, hey, I know who you are. <laughs> da, da, da. And I'm a P-Squad guy, barely – back and forth, P-Squad active, going back and forth. So for me coming there and him knowing who I was and introducing himself, that was big for me, and it showed me Wait, a lot of I, I who got, he was. Come on, I got to like, Does he literally walk up to you and be like, hey, man, I'm Tom Brady? Yes, he literally <laughs> did. <laughs> yep, literally. And I looked at him, I said, I know who you are. Right. <laughs> like literally one of the most famous human beings on the face of the planet. You're like, yep. oh, you're Tom Brady. I was wondering which one of you is Tom Brady. Yep. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> no, but nicest guy, first guy that's going to come up to you, talk to you, make make sure that you feel comfortable, that you're welcome. Um, he was that. Uh, everything opposite of what I heard of him prior to ever meeting him and what people say about him. So it's and funny. Their persona of him. It's funny you say that because I, I've got a couple of friends who have played for the Patriots over the years, and they've told me the exact same thing. Like, dude, he's 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 so you know exactly how famous he is, but then like legitimately, he's just a dude. He's just a yep. good teammate. Um, and I've heard stories about like you know he and Giselle just act like normal human beings, and you're like, you guys are worth a billion dollars. <laughs> like, yes, they do. Um, and they walk around like normal people. They act like normal people. They have the same normal conversations. <laughs> I, I don't feel like they view themselves as we view them. And I guess that they probably want it that way, right? But it's just hard. It's hard for me to fathom it. You know what I mean? Like, it's yes. hard for me. It'd be like if Oprah walked in tomorrow, and I'd be like, "All right, <laughs> you're you're just oh, you're just a person." But it just doesn't feel that way. It doesn't. Yeah. Right? It just. No, I agree. Right. Um, the 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 actual what you saw from him as a quarterback, right? Um, mm -hmm. What you saw from him as a player, up close and personal. And you, you know, obviously saw some good quarterbacks in your day, both playing with them and going up against them. Um, what made him so different that you could decipher in the time that you were with him just as a quarterback? Uh, preparation. Um, how he prepares each week. Um, the film study he does, he doesn't only watch his opponent. He watches other guys around the league. If you're doing something well, he's, he's going to pay attention to all of that. If it's something that he can take and use for himself or use for the team, he's going to take that. Um, so I would say his preparation, when it came down to breaking film and knowing exactly where guys were going to be and where you had to be, if he told you to be in this spot, he's telling you for a reason because he already broke down the film and know you're going to be wide open and it's going to it's going to work. So he was one of those guys that you felt like you were ahead of the curve when it came to game planning because he knew so much. He is Kamar Aiken. He's with us here on Glenn Clark Radio. Kamar, when you were in that moment, obviously you're still trying to carve out your own place in the NFL as you referenced, like you had gone from practice squad to active roster to practice squad a little bit. Did you – were you able to appreciate that as much at that point 
as you are you capable of doing now removed from your playing career? Um, no, I didn't appreciate it when I was there. I was probably mad like everyone else. I was like, why is this so hard here? Why is this so difficult? Why is that? The expectations are super high there. So it's, it's stressful playing for them, but the rewards are, you know, it, it's, 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 so, it's what you ask for. You ask to go play for a uh, AFC championship. You ask to go to the Super Bowl. So the rewards that come along with it, uh, it's a high demand. So that workload that came with it and just their mindset of the New England way, is it, it was different for me. Of course, in, in Baltimore, we're quite, quite glad that you didn't win a Super Bowl that year. I know it probably stayed. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> worked out okay for us that particular yeah. season. Worked out all right. Uh, Kamar, did you ever did you like keep anything from that time, like a, a ball that he threw to? Did you did you have the the foresight to say like, hey man, in in a decade, I might really wish I had something like this? Did did you keep nope. any of that stuff? No, I didn't because at the time I was more just, hey, I'm his teammate. I didn't want right. to look at him as like a hero, the idol, yeah. the idol he was, or the person that he was. I was more so just, hey, I'm trying to impress him, right? Show him that I, I could be one of the guys and and can help as well. So that was my whole mindset. I never even thought to even do anything like that. I still don't, to be honest, because if I see him today, he would probably greet me and meet me the same way he did the first time you ever met. You really me. believe that's really you didn't spend you spent what two months or I mean I guess you were back the next season for a little bit, right? Like yeah, and I spoke to him the year we played uh, them in the playoffs and okay in 2014, he, he, yeah. Yep, and he told me then that hey, I've been following everything, I've seen everything you've been doing, so I I know he pays attention and he he spurted out a couple plays that I said, okay, I know he's been watching. Wow, man. Wow. That's crazy. So he is that type of guy. That's unbelievable, dude. <laughs> like you, I mean, again, I know you're a competitor. You're an accomplished athlete, and I want to make this very clear, right? I don't want to minimize anything about you, Kamar Aiken. <laughs> but, like, what did that mean to you when you're you're chatting with him on the field in the, a, you know, in the AFC play? It was a divisional round that year. Divisional, yep. And he's literally telling you about plays that he's seen you run. Like, what does that do to you? to have Tom Brady say that to you? Uh, it just tells me the type of human being he is. It tells me that he wasn't doing it for show when I first met him. It tells me that this is who he is, and he wears it on his sleeves every day, and he's true to who he says he is. Man. man, And what we think he is. That's wild, bro. That's really – look, I, I, we're, we're only going to say so many nice things about Tom Brady here in Baltimore. <laughs> like, there's going to be a limit to that because, you know, we – we got to keep up yeah. appearances, my friend. You certainly <laughs> understand that. For sure. But, damn, that is really powerful, right? Like, that is really powerful that that dude who you spent only a little bit of time with was still concerned, was still watching and following and, and checking in yeah. with you. That's he, he is definitely that type of person. As much as as – many, as many things he has going on, he is still that person that pays attention to the little details and and would, and would say that to you and let you know. You know, everybody talks about, like, you know, quarterbacks are a different breed in general, right? W was right. it only the preparation that you – like, separating him. So, quarterbacks we know are a different breed. Now, Tom Brady's a different breed than even other quarterbacks who are a different breed, right? Was right. was preparation the only thing that you said, like, this is really how I can explain what made him so different? Or was there just anything else about his mannerisms, about how he handled the moment that was perhaps unique even from other quarterbacks? Um, he demanded a lot from you. Um, he was going to put a lot of work himself, and he was going to demand it from you. A lot of quarterbacks, they kind of stay in that uh, comfortable area. They don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to anger anybody. He was that person, hey, I'm going to work. I'm going to demand you to work as well. And if you work and I work, we're going to have good things that come ahead. So he was that type of person. And when you're around them, them type of people, you want to work hard for them. You want to do well for them. I mean, my my word, right? Like it 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 certainly worked out for him. <laughs> <You know>? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, that strategy paid off big time for him during the course. For sure, of his and he has the arm. That's 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 second nature to him. You know, he has the quarterback arm to do all that. But for me, what separated him was knowing his guys, knowing his personnel, knowing the players, and not just knowing them. Hey, this guy went from this school, but actually knowing them. Like this guy does this well. He doesn't do, do this too well. And him having a good understanding of each player, no matter if you're a P squad guy to their number one on the roster. Pretty incredible. That's pretty incredible, man. He's Kamar Aiken. He's with us here on GCR. All right, Kamar, let's catch up with you, man. What are you up to? Tell me, tell me what you're doing these days. I know you have been doing some podcasting for a little while. Like, what, yeah. what are, what are you doing in your life these days? Uh, right now, restaurants. Uh, I own some real estate properties, some commercial real estate, and I'm franchising and opening restaurants. What kind of restaurants? 
Uh, right now, Miami Grill is, our, is my project that I have going on now. It's a franchise based out of South Florida, and okay. we're opening up one in Orlando. Very cool, man. What kind of, you know, what, what's, what's the Miami Grill all about? What the uh, Philly cheesesteak is our number one seller. It's okay. probably second to none. And I played in Philly, and I had a couple Philly cheesesteaks in Philly, and I still say they're second to none. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This is, okay. You're opening a place <laughs> called the Miami Grill. And, yes. And the the thing to get is a Philly cheesesteak. A Philly cheesesteak. I know it's weird, <laughs> right. but that's their number one seller. And they import it strictly. It comes from Philly. Um, everything that, that that we serve, it literally comes from where it's derived from and where it comes from. All right. All right. I can dig that. You, you don't have like a Cuban on like, I, I hear the name Miami. We do, gr- we do that as well. Oh, man. That, <laughs> see, now that's worth making a trip, man. Yeah. Like, that is worth. It's just a different animal. You can't replicate the greatness of a cuban anywhere else man. yes it's, it is particularly special um you still but, you still watching the ravens at all you still involved you still yes i'm still a, i'm still a raven fan i'm still that's my team the kids wear the jerseys around here around the house that's We're, cool that that's who we support uh 100 so yes i still i still communicate with some of the coaches uh my receiver coach just left i just yeah. saw he took the Why, uh, wisconsin yeah we, uh, yeah bobby ingram uh-huh. with wisconsin offensive coordinator job um, yep. uh, I, you know, I, look, man, it was dis- it was disappointing the way things fell apart. That's kind of what happens when literally the entire team gets hurt. I know you guys had a year like that when you were here yep. where it was just brutal. You know, like yep, you yep. just look around, you're like, yo, everybody's gone. What the hell happened? Um, you know, you know how much criticism Lamar faces it, insanely. You know, the guy's only been the unanimous MVP of the league and, and one of the most dynamic playmakers we've ever seen in the history of football. And yet there are still people who are like, yeah, but I wouldn't pay him like, uh, you know, he's I don't think he's as good as 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 so and so and so and so. How insane do you find the criticism of Lamar Jackson to be nationally? Uh, Very insane, because he's still better than the majority of the league. Um, There's only a top five or six guys that you can arguably say, hey, these are our quarterbacks that I would take over him. Um, So for people to feel like that, they're probably not true Baltimore fans and can't appreciate what he brings to the game and what he's done for the city just in his small time of his career. Um, So for me, I I think he still has a lot to to show and a lot to give, but I think he's deserving of everything that's coming his way. I think he's deserving of a massive, you know, pay pay, pay the man his money, you know what I mean? Like, give him his bag and let's go from there. That's the way that this thing all works. That's how it works. They build around him and and see where it goes. You you know, there's there's this idea, right, because – you see that the Ravens have tried to be a more run-dominant team with the Greg Roman offense, right? And there'll be people that'll say, hey, you yep. know, that, that's not going to work in the NFL. you got to open it up. You can't try to do that. And I, I, I don't know. It was working pretty well until they lost all their running backs last season, right? Like, I, yep. I, I, I'm in a weird place where, admittedly, Kamar, I listen, you, know, you know how people are in media. All I hear from fans is they got to fire Greg Roman. They need a new offense coordinator, they need a new direction. And I'm like, dude, I – I don't, I don't know that I see that, man. Like the offense is really good, and has yeah. been really good. Where are you with the idea that like you have to do something different? You can't run the ball this much in the NFL. I, w- I would say they do have to find a better balance because they don't want to run into the trouble of hey, now we're down running backs and we're so one dimensional, and now we don't have the guys that we're kind of depending on, and now we have to flip the script. So I would say they would need more balance. But as far as their offense, I don't feel like they were a big major issue of their problems. I feel like it was more. Uh, defensively. If you look at the Ravens' history, it's always been we have one of the top defenses and a very good run game. Yep. That's always It's always been like that. So they need to get back to that, of having one of the top five defenses and having one of the top three or top five rushing games. And, look, obviously they were hurt by losing the majority of their secondary this season, too, of course. Like, that that, right. that, that doesn't help. But to your point, yeah. that there was not a team in the league that uh, allowed more yards per play this season than the Baltimore Ravens did. And yep. it, it's just not going to get the job done, man. <laughs> like, it's yep. just not going to work <laughs> that way. Uh, how scared are you, though, of, of Joe Burrow and just how good the Bengals are going to – like, we, you know, we're so used to it being Ravens Steelers right over the years. Yeah, but, I like, <laughs> dude, I mean, I, 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 I don't know what else there is to say. That guy's unbelievable. Like, he's he unbelievable. And I, I don't know any reason why they're not going to be a major problem for the next decade or so if he continues to stay healthy. And I, I think they are. Uh, I'm a I'm a fan of those guys since I've been watching them since they were in college. Um, I, it's unfortunate they had to go to Cincy. <laughs> right. But uh, I'm still a fan of them. But Cincy has been doing a very good job of getting their guys the ball, the, the major guys that they want to uh, have a, a big part of the offense. So the 
the Chase, the Higgins, those guys are, are getting their touches. Um, I think the Ravens could do the same thing with some of the, the big names that we have. You just have to get them guys more involved like how Cincy is and actually game plan for these guys to have some of the success they're having. I, I, I'm in complete agreement, man. Like, I, you know, it's Rashad Bateman looks so good, right? I'm so excited yeah. about Rashad Bateman. You see so much. And I think that's one, if there's a criticism, it's design more, like f- – force the issue to get the ball to Rashad Bateman because, my God, what isn't there to like about what yep. that guy brings to the table, right? It's yep, I agree. And they, they have a couple guys. Eleven is, is very well. I don't want to butcher his name, um, but I do watch him as well. He's a, he's, a, he's a good receiver that they can use more, but he's in the, you know, he's in the totem pole right now. He has to wait his turn. Um, You know, I, I, you're, uh, Proche, is that who you're talking about, James Proche? Yeah. yeah, number 11, yeah. I, I'm with you. I think he catches – like, the, the thing that jumps out at me, he catches the ball, he right? He catches the like, ball. He's a short catcher. That's what I'm saying. Like, you catch the ball, I, you know, we, it worked out pretty well with Anquan Bolden here once upon a time, right? All that dude yeah. did was just – I'm not trying to make to make that very clear. I'm not trying to say that James Proce Yeah, he's not no Anquan. Anquan. We're not saying he's an Anquan. Right. But as far as <laughs> making the catches, I feel like you can use him in, in no pos- uh, possession as a possession receiver in critical situations No question. Um, a little bit more. I know he doesn't have the big name like a lot of other guys that's carrying, but a lot of times you have guys on your roster that's like this that you can use, and you just got to figure it out and use them. At Kamar Aiken 88 on Twitter is how you give him a follow. Kamar, what about on Instagram? Where can people be giving you a follow there? Uh, it's Kamar Aiken. Same thing. Same thing. Give him a follow right there. Kamar, it's great to catch up with you, man. It's been too long. We'd love to do this again, just talking ball with you. Um, it's it's great to have these conversations, and it's it's awesome. When I'm down in Florida, I'm going to come over and find out if this, like, like a Philly cheesecake, or pe- cheesecake. Yes. Philly cheesesteak is legit, all right? I'm going to make that yes, happen. Yes, please do. I, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time for us this morning, all right? I appreciate you guys having me on. Kamar Aiken, former Ravens and uh, Patriots wide receiver. A uh, man who caught a few balls from Tom Brady, and that's, you know, I, I, I've heard that. Um, I think you guys know uh, one of my closest friends is A.J. Francis, who also played for the Patriots for a while among the stops in his career. And, you know, he's told me a lot of stories about Tom Brady over the years. And sometimes I've been dismissive of him, but he shared this on um, on Twitter yesterday. He said, with Tom Brady retiring – I want to tell three stories about him from my time with the Patriots. One day, Gronk ran the wrong route in practice. Gronk was already a two-time Pro Bowler, and Brady ripped him and started the period over. Brady made sure you was on your shit no matter who you were. Number two, the funniest thing he ever did was come in uh, before a flight to an away game, and Jay-Z had just dropped the song Tom Ford, and Brady came into the locker room with his Tom Ford suit bag draped over his shoulder and was singing the hook, I don't pop Molly, I rock Tom Ford, and we was dying. Most importantly, Tom was a good person. He introduced himself to me my first day on the team like I didn't know who he was. Sounds like something Kamar Aiken just told us. Giselle did the same thing at Vince Wilfork's Halloween party. There are more than enough people that don't have that kind of class. Look, man, you're not going to get me to love Tom Brady. It's just not going to happen. It's what it is. It's the nature of being a sports fan. I, I'm not going to love Tom Brady, but I, I know. I can respect. You say this as your heart's growing three sizes. No, 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 <laughs> none of that. I think that you, 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 the man retired yesterday, and we all know that he was the most accomplished player in the history of football. So you show the respect and the reverence towards that, towards the career that he had, and you acknowledge, yes, there's the – I have no idea what deflated footballs had to do with his career. I couldn't possibly tell you. It's part of the story. What extent the part of the story is, I don't know. Um, did did Tom Brady whining to the officials get old? Of course. But did it help his team? Yeah, it probably did. So if I was a Patriots fan, I probably would not care about Tom Brady whining at the officials the same way that I did. The, Steve Smith was a, a theatric type, right? And mm-hmm. when he was in Baltimore, people loved Steve Smith's theatrics. When he was somewhere else, if you were a, a, a Falcons fan or you were a Saints fan or you were a Buccaneers fan, you probably hated it. You were probably sick of all of the nonsense from Steve Smith, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it just probably depends on, on who you're rooting for. Um, you know, it's Tom Brady, man. Like, I, I don't really know what else there is to say. It's Tom Brady. There, there's, um, there's something to be said for the competitive nature that you have will make you look like a jerk to other people because when you know the game, as well as Tom Brady does, sure, you will see all the things that maybe referees will miss. 
And that's when you start. And I, I'm not making excuses for him because I got tired of it too, and I was never a big Tom Brady fan. I became more of a fan when he left New England, um, and then he proved that it wasn't. just... Yeah, I was never I, like I was never going to be able to embrace Tom Brady. Yeah, like it just I it just couldn't fully happen. Embraced him, nah. but but I'm a competitive guy, and I know that I've been one to argue with umpires in baseball games, and I've been one to put on theatrics be- when when I feel like something is not right. <laughs> remind me, remind me to not to pass when you ask me if I want to come out. <laughs> I do not suffer that in any way. No, not not like in pickup although, in friendly. Although games, although you know I say I, mean? I say that when when it's something's just flatly wrong. Mm-hmm. I've I've had instances like I'll accept you can get something wrong you get it wrong it's fine we're playing like I'll do the bit where I'm like yeah okay that's bad man and I'll just move on right but there was at one point we were playing kickball and we had a guy that we were having a lot of problems with that was um, umpiring the game and literally there was a ball that did the bit where it bounced foul and then came right back fair before it got to first base I picked it up I was playing first base I tagged first base and that was the out and the guy was like no it was a foul ball and I lost. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you, you just not understanding rules is a far bigger problem than getting something wrong. You get something wrong, you get something wrong, right? We all there's a million things we're gonna get wrong. Not knowing the rules is a problem, and I lost it. I, uh, we we don't need to get too much into our amateur hour athletics. Yeah. But I was I was pitching in a game, and a guy hit a bomb off me, and it hit the yellow um, line on the top of the wall uh-huh. and bounced back into play. Uh huh. And he called it a home oh, run. Oh, you were livid. And he goes, I said, that's not a home run. He goes, it hit the yellow line. I'm like, that's not the rule. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Been yeah. there. There's that. All right. When we come back, Andrew Forrester is going to join us. Uh, we'll chat with him about the, the topics du jour. I have Would You Rather Wednesday posted on uh, Facebook. i got to post it on Twitter. I'll do that right now. And uh, we'll do that with Forrester as well. That's on the way. It is a Would You Rather Wednesday edition of Glenn Clark Radio. That first sip. That first bite. Mm. Start your day off right with a delicious breakfast at Royal Farms. Choose from a fantastic selection of fresh Royal Farms breakfast sandwiches. And top it off with a rich hot cup of the freshest coffee in the world. At Royal Farms, breakfast is available day and night. It's the freshest breakfast in the world. Real fresh, real fast. Royal Farms. The latest issue of Press Box is available now, and it's our very special annual Best of Issue on the cover. We celebrate Justin Tucker as our Mo Gabba Sports Person of the Year, honoring his historic on-field achievements, but also the unprecedented relationship he shared with Baltimore. Inside, we recognize the top people, performances, and moments of 2021, including Cedric Mullins' incredible season and the dominance of local Paralympic athletes. Press Box is available for free at over 500 area locations, including including 60 Royal Farm stores. And you can always find the entire edition as well as the best daily coverage of the Orioles, Ravens, and Terps at PressBoxOnline.com. Sports fans, the wait is over. The all-new FanDuel Sportsbook is now open at Live Casino and Hotel in Hanover, Maryland. This is your chance to win big right in your own backyard. Bet on every sport with self-service kiosks and watch all of the action from the best seat in the house. Make every moment more at the all-new FanDuel Sportsbook at Live Casino and Hotel in Hanover. Please play responsibly. Gambling problem? Please call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit mdgamblinghelp.org. Window Depot Baltimore provides the highest quality pro via windows, doors, and siding for all budgets. The best is finally affordable. Call them today for a free in-home consultation at 410-941-3499. They also offer Zoom and FaceTime consultations in an effort to practice social distancing. A proud sponsor of the Tyus Bowser Show, you can find out more at windowdepotbaltimore.com. The Toyota Tacoma comes in a wide range of models and trim lines. You can choose the perfect Toyota to reflect your unique personality and driving habits. Check out buyatoyota.com for deals on new Tacomas from your local Toyota dealer today. If you miss anything, don't forget that you can find whole shows later on Spotify, Apple, or Amazon Podcasts. It's Glenn Clark Radio. Again, I'm a little confused by Kamar opening a Miami place that's all about Philly cheesesteaks. It's very confusing. Yes, Proctor, it'd be very similar to us opening a KC barbecue joint and making the first item New England clam chowder. But if the cheesesteaks are good, I'm not going to knock it. Like, I'm I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's a bad idea. I just, yeah, it's confusing. But I appreciate Kamar Aiken taking the time for us this morning. Uh, telling us a little bit about Tom Brady and talking some Ravens as well. Uh, today's show is also brought to you 
by Glory Days Grill. Of course, Glory Days. I was just there on Saturday, took my kids to the Towson game, and beforehand we wandered over to Glory Days Grill, and I think we had about 30 or 40 smoky thigh wings. Um, and then I, oh, man, you know what? Uh, Tim from Bel Air, I'm so, Tim's trying to figure out. Like, Tim sees the picture. He's like, dude, how do we replicate that? And I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to, trying to get you an answer, Tim. I promise. I'm working on that. Um, they are, they're unreal. They're just friggin' unreal. The smoky thigh wings at Glory Days Grill are everything I tell you that they are. It's not that I don't like other things on the menu. It's not that I don't love the burgers, the ribs, everything. They're, they're all wonderful. The smoky thigh wings are worth driving distance for. Like, if you are listening today, if you're Ben in San Francisco, it's worth making a trip to go get smoky thigh wings at Glory Days Grill. Glorydaysgrill.com is the website for you to get your order in. Glorydaysgrill.com. Drew Forrester, Drew's Morning Dish.com joins us here on GCR. What's going on, man? How are you? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Am wait, I wait. all right? Yeah, I mean, you're okay. Where are you driving to today? Um, I'm just running around. I got a lot of stuff going on today. We know we got Coward Hall Golf is starting, and I'm just, uh, I'm a busy man. I see. It's really weird to me. Uh, boy, the background noise. Are you on, are you on, uh, the headset? Is I'm going to, I'm going to disconnect from that all right, right now. Thank you. you. Give me about one minute. Yeah, you're good. You're good. It's just, it's just a bit much, all that background noise. The, uh, just give me one minute. I'll pull over. I'm, I'm, okay. Jeez. Drew Forrester. I've Drew's got this, I've got on. this headline that oh, I no. believe is going to be written. Yeah. No, this is this is legit. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want you to bear with me. And uh-huh. I don't know that this is exactly the date of the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. But the but just bear with me. February 14, 2025. Uh-huh. Brady's 3 TDs lead Browns. Ah, Browns. First ever title. Browns. I don't think Look, man, I I'm not saying he he wouldn't do that. It's going to be his kid. <laughs> I just don't think he's going to choose to. <laughs> I think he's going to choose elsewhere if he inevitably Look, decides if to come back. you could go, he's done everything he could do, right? Right, we would correct. All agree with that. There is nothing else that Brady could do but that. Uh-huh. If he did that, if he did that, if he went yep. to Cleveland and he made them a champion, then we – then. Then he should be the president of the country. I, I was expecting you. Where I thought you were going was that you knew that there was, like, a football player at Calvert Hall named Command, and you were going oh. with, like, Commander's Command Command or something. That's where I thought you were you were headed. No, 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 no. This is legit. I think Brady's yeah, coming it, back at age 50. Is it legit, though? <laughs> is it I think legit? he's coming back at age 50. That's the only part. I've said this always. The only part about this that's surprising to me is that I legitimately convinced myself that that's what this was about, that the man wanted to be the guy that said he had played until he was 50 years old. And, you know, obviously we all, we're all saying the same thing. There's no – any team in the NFL would take Tom Brady next season. Any of them. Any single uh, – name the team that feels – Kansas City, it's the one. There's one team in the NFL. I, I guess Green Bay would probably still prefer Rodgers, but, you know, he might not want to be there. Um, there that's, that's it. That's it. That's the entire list of teams that would say we're better off than if we had Tom Brady at 45 years old. It's, it's, it's bonkers. You know, yeah. it's funny. I, I, and I, I would like to know, like, I, I, didn't, I didn't even really read the statement. I mean, I know he put something out and it was written. Well, I guess he wrote it. But, you know, it's all wordsmithing, right? I would like to know why he's leaving. Like, what is it? Is hard. Like, don't tell me about I'm, I'm, your family and all that. You, you know, you've been around your family in twenty years. Like, what? What <laughs> okay. is it really? That has is it? Is it that he looks at? Is it physical? I mean, is it harder for him now? Not, that, hang on. Why does it matter? What the answer is? I just I'm well because there is no reason for him to do it. Except like with fact- Ray. When Ray hung him up. Right, he couldn't do it anymore. It was over. He couldn't I do it, it anymore. Right, I get it. Brady can still do it. But, like, there, what? but there are other reasons. Like, you know that. Like, the idea of I don't have to do this. I can go play golf. I can go do the things that I want. I just, I'm I'm worth a billion dollars. I don't have to do this any longer. And I'm just not, it, it doesn't get me going the same way anymore, man. Like, dude, I got, this is not a joke. I, you might not even, I don't know if you guys can tell from my face. I damn near got a concussion from playing around with a football with my kid in the bedroom last night, right? Like, 
we do a bit every time night before I put him to bed where like they take the football and it's the two of them versus me and they're trying to throw it to each other and score touchdowns and we were both diving after a loose ball and we not he knocked his head into my face and legitimately for a second I thought I had a concussion. Well, you're kind of soft. He okay? Yeah, uh, he's fine. Oh, yeah, he's, he's made out of rubber, man. Come on. Man. You're like, kind of barely. soft. That's fine. And the concussion thing is way overblown. I don't <laughs> think those things really happen. No. Okay. It's <laughs> probably not. Probably not what we should be doing. Today. <laughs> but you get the point, man. Like, I d- if I I'm Tom it. Brady and I got hit and I'm 45 years old, I could absolutely see him saying, "What? There's nothing else to do. I already shoved it up Belichick's ass. I already like what? Right. What else do I need? Is there to do any it? chance that on July the third he's back? Is there a chance? Of course. Like everything about this week was so weird. The weirdest part being. It's one thing that he tried to pretend like Adam Schefter was making this up when it was abundantly clear that Adam Schefter was not just making this up. Like, literally, ESPN has a business deal with Tom Brady. The notion that they would allow Adam Schefter to go on the air and report this without knowing that it was true is nonsense. You can say whatever you want about Adam Schefter. It's fine. The Mr. Editor thing was super embarrassing on his part, right? But, like, they have a business agreement with Tom Brady. He was not making this up. So that's fine. You want to pretend like he's making it up because you want to make the announcement. Go go for it. He literally does his own show on XM and went on his own show on Monday night and said, no, I haven't made my mind up. Not at all. Like, what are you talking about? I'm still thinking right. about it. Right. Only two hours later, make the announcement on Instagram. Right. It, everything about this week was in, it's bizarre as F. And if part of that is because in his mind – like, he thinks he wants to be retired, and he's pretty sure he wants to be retired, and he wants the Buccaneers to have the right to go ahead and, and make the decision of what they want to do next. But he he also knows that come July he could wake up and say, eh, you know, I didn't really want to do the OTAs, but I kind of wouldn't mind throwing the ball around a few times this year. Yeah, I could see that playing out, of course. Of course. Yeah, I, I don't think he's done. I don't That's know. just my personal – and it might not even be this year. Right. I, I don't. I don't think he's done. I think he'll play again. All right. I mean, I. I don't know what he's gonna do. Right. Like. He, I'll tell you what he's gonna do. Yeah. I'll tell you exactly what he's gonna do. Okay. He's gonna he's go gonna to the Browns. Be, I, I heard. No. 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 He's gonna be bored. Well, yeah. Okay. Because you can't replicate this. There's nothing else you can do that's playing. He, he's gonna be bored. I, as weird as it sounds, that how could you be bored with Giselle? He's gonna be bored. Right. No, I get it. I completely under. Like, you know, there's 24 hours in a day. <laughs> like you don't have a job. You wake up and you realize right. you're only. 45 years old or 44 right now. Yeah, and he's going to he's going to have four, and it might take him 4 months to be bored or it might take him 15 months to be bored. Right. He's going to be bored. Yeah. And at some point he at some point he's going to say you know what this this could be fun for me. Okay. All right. I'll listen. That's to that. my prediction. I'll listen You've to not that. seen the last of him. Um do you think that the the Flores thing will be as explosive as some people believe it's going to end up being? I do. I think that, um, you know, and I'm, I wrote about it today a little bit. I, I didn't really do a deep dive today, honestly, because I was kind of swamped just today with stuff, Calvert Hall, and then I watched Maryland last night in the Caps. Like, I didn't get into it. I read about you 30 watched, pages. This is such a weird bit. When Maryland was good, you didn't watch the games. What is going on now? Like, why, why is now the time? I always you, watch Maryland basketball. Stop. That's the state school. I don't know if you know that. I do um, I they, don't. I don't watch Maryland. So last night, I'm recovering I, from my concussion. Somebody's like, "Hey, Maryland's right, in the game. You might want to turn right. it on." I'm like, "All right, fine. I'll look at it for a second. I read about 30 pages of the 58 pages because I I do want to opine on it, and I I do want to, I you know, I want to be able to offer something, and I've read on it, and I didn't read it all. So today, I I kind of tiptoed into it a little bit on a Drew's Morning Dish, and I just kind of wrote a few things about it. I would say this: it a is it going to be as explosive as everyone says? A one hundred percent. B, and I am no in no way, shape, or form am I trying to diminish or mitigate the racial bias part of the lawsuit. The owner offering him a hundred thousand dollars to lose games, if that is if that claim can be proven, that I, I think there is some significant fallout from that from the league standpoint as it relates to their association with gambling. I, I think it's almost – I mean, I, that's the type of thing that you have to go in front of Congress to talk about. How do you take $17.5 million from 
these sports books to be the official daily whatever of the NFL? How do you mm-hmm. take that money from them? And in this is not happening in Maryland right now. We can't bet on sports on our phones, but you can drive to York, Pennsylvania. Well, can't drive to York. You got If you live in York, Pennsylvania, you can place a bet tonight on your phone, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. How does the league expect people like you and I and anyone who buys tickets to think it's on the up and up and betting on the games <laughs> if the owner of one of the teams – is enticing his coach to lose. Oh, yeah. it, it, look, the, how, how, how do you how how do you as a league expect people like you and I to watch the games and believe they're on the up and up? And is seventeen and a half million dollars that you get from DraftKings plus the forty they spend on TV? Is it really worth that to you? Like, or do you want your owner? to offer his coach a hundred grand to lose and do you not think people like you and I are smart enough to see through that and I think I'm not again I'm not mitigating or or in any way trying to downplay the racial bias thing of the Flores story because I think it's significant I think it's going to be difficult for him to prove I I mean I I think we would all agree right it unless he's got a yeah he's got an email or a smoking gun that's that's really really concrete it's going to be hard for him to prove that they didn't hire him because he's African American. If he's got some way to prove that this owner offered him a hundred thousand dollars to lose games, a that guy's got to be out of the league for sure, right? Right. And B, I think the league is going to be really going to be faced with not maybe not being able to accept money from I, these. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I'm I don't gonna, know how I'm, you accept money from gambling entities. I'm going to disagree with that because it's part. Like, you can bet on professional wrestling. Like you, you, you that part of it. I I, I understand you, you can do that. You accept. But when you that, can't have the owner of a team I, in your league enticing the coach. Right, but that's I agree with that. Games. But that's but that's how the NFL responds and says, well, he's not going to be an owner anymore, and and we're going to pretend like this isn't going to happen again. Whereas we know there are going to be teams that are gonna, like there are teams that could play players down the stretch that just simply don't because there's no benefit to them in winning the game. It doesn't mean the players on the field are trying to lose, and it's something we talk about over no, no, no. about I, tanking. And, and I think we all know in the past that that's happened. And right. I think and I and I do think that some of this will also result in the league potentially trying to reconfigure the way they do the draft sure. as an example, sure. right? right. Um, I, I, I've always been vehemently against losing on purpose. I, and I do understand the difference between getting Joe Burrow at one and getting some other dude at nine yep. and it changes your franchise. I get it. I get it. I get it. But you know, it smacks in the face of the integrity of the competition when you, as the owner, are telling this guy lose these games and I'll get you a hundred thousand. There's no doubt. That's, and, that's incredibly. And, and I think for a long time, we, and you know, you did see this in the NBA, but I think for a long time we have all seen stuff at the in the NFL that has made you say, "Hmm, that's kind of weird, right?" We've seen it. Yeah. But but right, and then we do what you just did. Right. We do we do we do the bit where we say. Yeah, but dude, I played sports. I know how it goes. Yeah. Like weird stuff happens, Correct. and penalties don't get called when they should. So we've all done that. We did what you just did. Yep. But the more I see this stuff, the more I see Stephen Ross hundred grand, the more I say, they these guys all might be on the take. Well, the, the weird part about this is that like we all knew knew I'll use that in air quotes that that Dolphins team wasn't trying. Right, like they were not putting the best players they could on the field. They wanted to get a top draft pick to draft their quarterback. Like we knew that. That's everybody went into it knowing that. I think the separation for me is when it comes to gambling. So did Vegas. Vegas knew that too, right? And so they set the lines appropriately during the course of that season. So it's why the gambling part of this I don't think comes into play. Those things can be on the table. Now to your point, what's to say? that you know, some shady guy doesn't walk up to another coach and say, well, I'll give you $6 million if you lose this game somehow. Of course, that, that could happen. Of course, it's possible. But the gambler has to make that decision. Knowing anything is possible in the same way that you know that Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase could both get diphtheria the night before the Super Bowl and not play, but yet you're willing to make a bet today, 
you take on those types of things. You, all that's correct. You want to participate. All that's correct. But, you want to participate. But it's on me. you. You can't. All that's correct. But you can't have the league be in cahoots with those people. I, I agree, and that's why the league will have. If if this is true, if he really was offered that, then the league's going to have to step in. Like they're going to have to say you can't be the owner of the football team any longer. That, like that. It's that. But I just don't. The part where we extend to can they continue to be in bed with gambling? I disagree with that. Like oh, that, I, I, that I, stuff I exists. Don't, I, you and I are going to have a fist fight over this. Well, I mean, I got bad news for you. You're 100 years old. You had a birthday the other day, and I saw how many I candles know. were I got, got by another one, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I do think it's an explosive century. story. I think Flores, um, I, I, you know, I think I don't even want to say naive. I think naive is a terrible word to even use in this. But we, if you don't believe, based on the history of the league, if you don't believe African American coaches have been somehow overlooked intentionally, oh, I on. think you're being naive. Of course, of course. Come on. I mean, come on. Right. Now, which, which doesn't mean, and again, there's a separation from that, right? And we've had these conversations before. There is something about the Rooney Rule which is weird, which is I, sometimes a team just knows who they're hiring. They've just decided this is the person that they're hiring. And is it disrespectful? to bring in someone to interview for a job that you know you're not giving them, right? Like, because you've got to do it to be a part of the process. We've had these conversations over the years, right? If, if he really walked into a meeting with the Broncos and all of them were hung over and did not care, like, that, they should be in trouble for that, right? Like, that's, that's, that, that can't be acceptable. But at the same time, I, 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 mm, I don't know. I don't know when the line is racism versus, look, man, we've got to do this because we've got to do this, but we know who we're hiring, and it's just because we think we're hiring a good candidate to be our next head coach. Right, and 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 therein lies the rub as it relates to the rule, and I would agree with that too. I think that, I think that that's a, and I'm not saying that people, I'm not saying that African Americans don't aren't willing to accept that. And I'm not saying Brian Flores wouldn't accept it, but that is the truth. The truth is. You're not. You're a really good football coach, and we like you. But this is the guy we want to hire, and there are some reasons why we want to hire him that have nothing at all to do with you. Right. Like that does exist. I. I. And I think Brian Flores probably would even admit that. But it's the constant, and this year, this year particularly uh, no. is an interesting example. No question. Because I, I guess I would submit to you that if at one end I forget what they were, six or seven, at at one and six. And I'm just going to throw this out. It's a mythical thing. If at one and six, Josh McDaniels would have left the Patriots and gone to Miami, and they would have finished nine and eight, he would be the golden boy. Right? Yep. If the Dolphins started one and six this year, fired Brian Flores, brought Josh McDaniels in at midseason, and he turned them around and within a whisker making the playoffs and got them to nine and eight. He would be there. Yep. Yep. That's. I, I think that that's the. I'm not an attorney, but that's the first thing I would say if I were representing Brian Flores. You, you didn't want this guy to come back and coach the team, but I think we all know, had you brought in another coach from the outside and he would have done what this guy did, you would have kept that guy. All right. Uh, anything at all? Drew Forrest or Drew's Morning Dish with us here on GCR. Anything from John's Har John Harbaugh's press conference that, that mattered to you? I, I just – it did not – nothing about it spoke to me in much um, of any way. No, you know, I did write about it yesterday. I think a couple of things stood out to me. The first thing that stood out to me was when the guy said four-year extension. John didn't even bat an eye and didn't even try to correct him. and just went right into his answer about Steve. So I, I, I guess John's getting a four-year extension. Yeah. Um, because if he wasn't, he would have said – which yeah, is, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I saw you say that, and you, I hear what you're trying to say, but at the same time, I also think John's kind of made it a habit to not talk about it at all, right? And I, I think it's possible that, like, if he knows it's three, then he just sort of would have been like, I'm not messing with it. You think you know what you're talking about. I'm, okay, I'm well, maybe, but I, 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 don't th I think John would have said, as an aside, I don't know where you got that from, but anyway, I think the one thing that stood out to me a little bit was, um, and, yeah, I mean, Look, I'm a John fan. I always have been. I, I always will be. I've, I've always liked him. Um, I've always liked his approach. I think he's been here a long time now. He doesn't really, no matter what he says up there, he doesn't really like doing these things anymore. Right. But he knows it's part of the deal. Um, and so part of what you have to parse through is 
what he was saying, like, what did he really want to say, and what did he want you to, what did he want you to interpret? I think the part about the fitness and the injuries thing is probably something he really, really cares about because I think in his heart of hearts he knows that that's what wrecked his team this year. The two point conversion things that didn't wreck his team. The 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 running back, the running backs that got hurt in August yep. that wrecked his team. Yep. Like, and I think if I'm John, the one thing I'm saying, if I'm John, is I'm going to my training people and saying to them, do you have an explanation for this? Like, and I'm not saying that if you do have an explanation for it, that I'm going to fire you. I'm asking you to come to, to come sit in a room with me and let's figure out, do we have an explanation for this, whatever it might be, whether or not it's the time of the day we train, what we eat before, the shoes we wear, are we watering the field too much? Not watering the field enough. Like, what right, right, is going right, on? Right. I think, to me, the one thing that he mentioned that came out to me was we're, we're really looking into that. That's the one thing I think I got from it. That I, and I believe he's honest when he says that. I don't think that was lip service. I, I think John knows his team got wrecked this year because of the injuries, and he just needs in his heart of hearts to know did we screw that yeah, up, or right. was it just a fluke? Was it all right? Was it all just unfortunate happenstance? Sure, right. I don't disagree and, and, with that. And, but you've got to be able to have, and that, and you know, this is part of the issue, right? You got to be able to have an honest conversation to say we weren't trying to screw things up when we watered the field too much. Yep. I'm just using that as an example. Yep. We weren't trying to screw things up. We thought it was right, but it turns out it wasn't right. All right, uh, before I let you go, and I, we got to do the, the 60 second version of this. Uh, John in Little Rock wants to know why you're in love with Greg Burhalter. No, John's an idiot. Ah, I'm not geez. in love with Greg Burhalter in the least. I think that people like John, um, typically, all they want to do is just fire the coach because they think, and I'm going to go on a rant now, uh, and he'll I get pissed said, off. I said but 60 this second. Is what, this is what people do just fire the coach. It's coach. It's the coach. It's the coach. Fire the coach. These people are morons. They need better soccer players. Now, in this specific case, where they're now in this little, whatever you want to call it, this mini slump, although they did win last week against El Salvador, in this specific case, I see circumstances, as example would be Ricardo Pepe, where I would play, this is me, I would play this guy, mm -hmm. but, I, but I'm not there. I'm not at practice. I'm not in the locker room. I'm not training. I am not there. And this is what people like John don't understand. You're not there. You have no idea what you're talking about. Now, I think they're in a I let me tell you. They're in a they're in a dire I don't know, dire, but they're in a dire situation. Well, they like, they cannot yeah. afford yep. they can't afford to slip up at home at all. Yep. Like they gotta win tonight and they gotta beat Panama next next month. And they can't afford to slip up at home. And you know how soccer is, dude. They give up a goal tonight in the ninth minute that shouldn't yep. go in, and all of a sudden, Panama, uh, Honduras packs it in, it in yep. and we, we lose one nothing. The whole world changes. Yep, no doubt. No doubt so about it. So I am not at all. I read the thing yesterday at ESPN where Carlisle and Conley and all those guys were like, ah, they're going to get through. Uh, have you been paying attention to U.S. soccer? I said to you a couple weeks ago. I know everybody's been like, yeah, they'll be okay. I'm like, man, I – Y'all are way more confident than I am. Like, way more confident than I am. I hope you're right, and though. I hope I, you're right. I, I mean, they should win tonight going yep. away. Yep. It doesn't really matter what the score is, but yep. they should win tonight going away. But they're going to need to likely going to have, unless something wacky happens with some of these other results, they're going to have to go get a point at either Mexico or Costa Rica. I'm, I, it, and, it, and watching them play on the road, I, 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 I don't you. know that they can go get a point from either of those two venues. All right, Drew Forrester, DrewsMorningDish.com, at It's a Hooded 4-Iron on Twitter. That's how I you might follow. come in next week. I'll let you know. All right, let me know. Let me know. We're, we're doing a sports betting show now on Wednesdays, too. So you can – I know you don't really bet on sports. I nah, know I'm never good. Really been, never really been the type. I'm All right, good. Pal. I got 7-2. to two, so I'll be there. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll talk to you. Thanks, pal. See you. Drew Forrester, DrewsMorningDish.com. Today's show is also brought to you by your local Toyota dealer and buyatoyota.com. Whether your focus is luxury and comfort, convenience and technologically advanced connectivity, or sporty performance and aggressive styling, we've got the perfect Highlander for you. Check out buyatoyota.com for deals on new Highlanders from your local Toyota dealer today. We'll come back in. We'll talk more about the Brian Flores situation, what it means for the league. Um, Professor Robert Boland is going to join us next, sports attorney. 
had some interesting thoughts about this situation as a whole. It's Glenn Clark Radio. Duffy's Garage is a family-owned and operated car care facility in beautiful Baldwin, Maryland. An authorized Maryland inspection station and Napa Pro Care Center with ASE certified techs. Tell them that Glenn Clark sent you and receive 10% off your service with a max discount of $150. You gotta trust where you take your car, so take it to where I take mine. Duffy's Garage in Baldwin. Duffy'sGarageMD.com from all of the biggest games to the smallest events, make every bet worth your while at MyBookie. Start by doubling your first deposit instantly with MyBookie's first deposit bonus up to $1,000. Double your money before you even place a bet, and all you have to do is sign up and deposit using the exclusive promo code PRESSBOX at MyBookie.ag. If your first deposit is $100, MyBookie adds $100 so you can start with $200 to play with. If your first deposit is $1,000, MyBookie adds $1,000 so you can start with $2,000 to play with. With tons of great games and prop bets to take advantage of this week, there is truly something for everyone. Don't wait any longer. Head to MyBookie today to redeem your double deposit bonus so you can start winning big today. That's promo code PRESSBOX to receive double your first deposit instantly in your account. No hassle, no wait. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie. It's another cold winter here in Baltimore, but this time there's no hot stove to warm you up. Hi, I'm Paul Valley, and while there may be no activity in the world of baseball, I'll still be here every week with my co-host Zach Goodman to give you all the latest in the CBA negotiations as teams look to get back on the field in time for spring training. You can watch us live every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon at youtube.com slash pressboxonline or facebook.com slash pressboxsports and listen at pressboxonline.com slash radio. So tune in every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon for the latest in baseball coverage right here on The Battle Round. Glory Days Grill's winter seasonal menu is back with comfort classics like their house-made meatloaf and short rib grilled cheese. It also features the center-cut sirloin with grilled shrimp, the char-grilled pork tenderloin, grilled meatloaf sandwich, smoky thigh wings with Alabama barbecue sauce, and a Brussels and bacon appetizer. All of these items pair well with Devil's Backbone 8-point IPA or their anniversary IPA brewed by Devil's Backbone. And try their seasonal cocktails, Blood Orange Burger, Bourbon Cider, Apple Ginger Mule, and Captain's Hot Cider. Find out more and get your order in today at glorydaysgrill.com. Great food, good sports. Window Depot Baltimore provides the highest quality pro via windows, doors, and siding for all budgets. The best is finally affordable. Call them today for a free in-home consultation at 410-941-3499. They also offer Zoom and FaceTime consultations in an effort to practice social distancing. A proud sponsor of the Tyus Bowser Show, you can find out more at windowdepotbaltimore.com. We can't imagine why you'd want to, but you can watch GCR live. It's at Facebook.com slash PressBoxSports. And try to guess whether these guys are wearing any pants. If you haven't picked up the new print issue of PressBox yet, it is available right now at your neighborhood Royal Farms or any of the hundreds of locations around town where you find PressBox. You can read it all. PressBoxOnline.com slash best of. It is our best of issue with our Mo Gabba Sports Person of the Year, Justin Tucker, right there on the cover. Go get it today. We were just talking a little bit about the uh, Brian Flores lawsuit. Um, and it's interesting because we're about to have somebody on who's been a regular over the years. It's been way too long since we chatted with him. And I had just happened to see uh, via Facebook something that he had written about this situation uh, with minority coaches and the struggle to find jobs right now in the NFL. He had written about it at cultureandsports.com. And wouldn't you know, um, it turns into one of the more explosive stories in recent memory with this Brian Flores lawsuit. Joining us now here on GCR, he is a sports attorney. He is now the Athletics Integrity Officer at Penn State. He is Mr. Robert Boland, and he's with us now here on at GCR. Robert, Professor, it's Glenn and Paul. It's been far too long. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes for us this morning. It, it, it's been far too long, and I'll, 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 just, I'll just put the clarification on that I'm I'm not wearing my athletic integrity officer hat. I'm sure. wearing my professor hat. Today. Okay, you're wearing the professor hat. I, 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 teach, I teach at the law school and the labor school at Penn State. And uh, ironically enough, yesterday morning before the Flores suit was filed, I, my subject in my class in collective bargaining and pro sports was, is the Kurt Flood lawsuit still relevant today? Hmm. How about that? And, and then the answer came in in the afternoon. Yeah, quite relevant. Very, very relevant. Um, uh, professor, okay, in, in looking over the suit, in particular, and in the context of 
what you laid out in your piece this week, which is what we all know, right? We all know there's an issue, but can it be proven to directly be racism in a court of law? And does that matter if it can be proven or not in terms of this lawsuit? Well, I think I think it's incumbent on every lawsuit to be provable, but sometimes lawsuits are, are strategically used differently. Right. And I think this one, if it's going to end, probably ends in some sort of publicly structured settlement. It's clearly geared to be sensational, and it's clearly geared to get around some of the challenges that you'd have in trying to prove it. And I think the proof of this case will ultimately come is to some degree how many people join uh, Flores in saying, yeah, this happened to me too. I, I agree, and that's sort of what I was alluding to, Professor, which is I, I don't know how important it is that there's some sort of – I think a lot of people use the word smoking gun. Like there is some sort of text or email that definitively proves that someone wasn't hired because of the color of their skin. I don't know if much as that's relevant as it is the totality of people sharing their experiences – that sort of forces the NFL to sit down and say, you know what, we have screwed this up, and we don't know how we've screwed it up, but we've screwed it up, and we have to acknowledge that, and we have to do something about that. Yeah, I think that's it, and I think to some degree we have we owe a greater duty, both to our fan base, but to our but to the the people of our community who coach and play in our sport. Right. So I do think that's an important piece, and I think that's the part where this this needs to be a structured settlement. There are a lot of threads that are alleged. Obviously, the Belichick tweet is uh, is probably the smoking gun for these purposes. That that Flores was subjected not just once but a couple of times in his life to what were what were surface interviews right. where he had no chance of getting a job. He was it was a and, token candidate, if you will, and, and he was a candidate used to satisfy the Rooney Rule and, and satisfy a, a tokenish surge. And, and to some degree, he lost the job because he was treated differently than other coaches would have been. I mean, I could only imagine an owner trying to tell Bill Parcells that, uh, oh, no, you have to tank. Right. That the response would be, yeah, you won't own the team much longer if that's the case. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a, it, an important suit. It puts a lot on it. I don't necessarily believe that this will go the distance in, in, the, in the court of law. And, and I, I think it's geared to bring all the parties to the table and facilitate some sort of, and I think it needs to be transparent, some sort of transparent process that alleviates this problem. We're chatting with uh, Professor Robert Bolin from Penn State. He is, of course, a sports attorney. He's with us here on GCR. Professor, um, I, I, you know, I, I guess the other side of it <laughs> How is— How about Bob from now on? All right, we'll go with Bob. That's fine. Bob, I, I guess the, uh, the, the situation that I'm struggling with is separating these two things, right? Because I, I don't know which charge is more explosive, and I don't think that the one charge dismisses the racism side of it, right? But, like, for the NFL, the side where an owner is asking any coach or offering to pay any coach to lose football games, that sounds like the type of thing that can be brought in front of Congress at some point. Like, that sounds like the type of thing that the feds would be interested in that seems to me as as problematic and as awful as the charges of racism are in a way that seems to me as though it could be even more of an issue for the nfl right yeah that's absolutely devastating um the idea that that this particularly in a league that whether whether explicitly or or now now absolutely explicitly is, is doing business with betters uh to have anything that would compromise the integrity of every game and the effort of every team in every game is certainly something that is a worry for the league. Um, and to have owners understand that, that tanking is a good thing in some way or strategic is a devastating if it's, it's a devastating moment. I don't know how that comes out, but that keeps the league's attention on that for, for a foreseeable time that uh, Steve Ross will be investigated through this process. And, and I think that that's a separate track in this, in this argument. Flores is uh, Flores's career status and the career status of other African-American coaches who, who've been subjected to this kind of treatment is sort of separate and apart from that. A hundred percent. And obviously, you know, th there's the charge of course in there of tampering as well. I, that one to me, I don't know. We, We've kind of accepted tampering as being part of football at this point. So I'm not really sure what we do about that. Like, you know, I, I, I think it. I think it, it has. It has an interesting piece because 
it helps explain why Flores isn't in Miami right now. Sure. Uh, it, it, it helps explain what he was being asked to do that, that led to the reputation and ultimately his dismissal. Uh, so I think that that, that, it's key, that that part feeds, supports both arguments to a degree. We have an owner operating lawlessly. We have a coach trying to stand up to him, and now he was, he was, he was cut loose essentially as a whistleblower to some degree. Uh, so <clears throat> that's, I think, an interesting piece of that. I think it also really does undercut, and it kind of goes back to what we said in the article. It's, it's the, the double-edged problem of the rock and the hard place here that minority coaches get hired less frequently, yep. uh, hired, at, hired at a more difficult and, and, and painful pace, and get hired to organizations where they're not treated fairly and let go too quickly. Correct. This, so it's a coming and going problem. Yeah, hundred. I mean, there's there's just no as, as you point out the David Culley situation. Like, what what possibly more could you have asked that person to do in that situation? And this disaster of a situation that he was put in, that he somehow figured out a way to win some football games and made their third round pick quarterback look like he might be an NFL quarterback, right? Like, how in that's, the that's, world? That's exactly right. It's yeah, in, in, a, in, a, in a terrible situation. And then, and then to have an organization say, no, I'll just move on from you. Too. Right, right. And, and the answer to be, well, th- this was always the plan all along. We only thought he was going to be a coach for one year. Like, what? 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 <laughs> like, what in the world? All right, anyway. Anyway, uh, uh, Bob, let me, let me cover one other aspect of it that I think is getting a lot of attention, which is that the biggest problem, you know, this is the opinion that a lot of people, smart people, there's people that think they're smart anyway, will try to say. The real problem isn't the lawsuit. The real problem is discovery. Right. Like that they don't want people to find anything else. And to this point, I'll point out that there's all we've learned from the Bruce Allen situation is John Gruden. Right. Like they've managed to protect everything else. Somehow Dan Snyder is still allowed to stand up there in a stupid letterman jacket and be the owner of a football team this morning on national television. I, there is no such thing as a stupid letterman's jacket. Right, it's one of the best-looking articles of clothing, but my God, was that toned down. It was so cringe. <laughs> it was it so was cringe. cringe. <laughs> Everything yeah. about it. You're just like, are we really pretending? Like, are we, we've just moved on. And like, hey, here's happy Dan Snyder. Like, what are we doing here? Uh, yeah, I, but, I, I, I can't believe, I can't believe that that, in light of yesterday's events, wasn't <laughs> postponed. Oh, my it, word. It, 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 it put, it put the focus right back on to the, the challenge and the problem. And, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, the NFL is an organization that has done things in a very private, very much behind closed doors sense. It is a group of 32 or 31 specific power broker owners and their families. Uh, it's a very, very exclusive club. Um, but I think that the, the, the answer to this, and you're right, discovery or settlement has to have some transparency attached. I think that's the most important piece. To, that, that, and then maybe that's why, at the end of the day, the Clinton right. claim is in there. Because, yeah, you probably could reach a settlement on the, on the discrimination basis, on everything, reach an end to that, but not solve the problem. And I think by combining those two, maybe you get around that. Yes, I think the, I think the NFL has a has an incredible has an incredible sense that they're going to have to act swiftly and and to and to make this not not so much go away but not happen again. Sure, sure. It's it, it you know, I think the, the easiest way of saying it, it's in their interest maybe to not have their business be put out publicly. I think my question would be more is it a certainty that if we do go further with this lawsuit, you know, I think that the people forget I think there's this concept that in discovery you can just find out anything you want to find out, right? Like, and I that's not entirely true, correct? Like, they can't just say you have to turn over all of the emails that anyone who has ever used an NFL team's email account has ever sent. Like, it's it's not quite that simple, correct? If only it, if only it were for for for, for plaintiffs' lawyers. Yeah, right. No, it's not. There there is a lot that can be found, obviously, in that process. Um, but yeah, it's it's very difficult to find it. A lot of that is governed by some in some cases by protective orders, and this is a difficult one to find that information. What we generally find, though, a little like the Gruden ones, we find other embarrassing things in there, and that is a, a place where maybe the maybe that's the powerful, compelling force to say, hey, we want to avoid that. We want to we want to move toward reaching not not just because it's the right answer but because it's the right answer and it's expedient. And that, that may be the, the combining force of this, of this case. Bob, I hear you've got a book coming soon. 
I'm writing a book on NIL. Uh, we'll, uh, I, I've got to get the first chapter into the publisher on uh, on Monday, and uh, I'm, I'm struggling with that like everybody else. But uh, it's been uh, it's been a labor of love in my day job and something I've been around for 25 years as a lawyer and a professor and, and, and other things. So hopefully people will like that, and hopefully it'll take some of the mystery away of, uh, of, of the thing that everybody's talking about and nobody quite right. understands. That's a great point. I, this is a promise. I hope that we, you and I chat before then. If not, I guarantee it won't go longer than whenever the book's coming out because we're definitely going to have you on then to talk about it. I, I, I appreciate it so much, Glenn. I, I love I love your show, and I'm, I'm honored to be with your guests and your, your audience. Bob, so really you. appreciate you taking the time for us this morning. If you haven't read the piece, we're going to link it up. It's at cultureandsports.com, uh, a great piece that Bob wrote about the situation facing uh, minority coaches in the NFL. I'll get that sent out right now uh, on our Twitter account. Bob, thank you so much for taking a couple thank of minutes for us. Thank you so much. Yep. Professor uh, Robert Boland from Penn State checking in with us here on GCR, sports uh, attorney. And, um, again, I, I think that's what people say explosive things. Like, the real problem is discovery. Yeah, it could be. It could be that that's the real problem. But just bear in mind, it's not not always as simple as you lay it out to be. Like, they can't just say, hey, turn over everything you've ever said, every tweet you've ever sent, every text you've ever – that's not how discovery works. You You have to have a reason. There has to be something you're specifically looking for in order for that person, because what they're going to say is this is overbearing. This is what we, we've watched this play out with, say, um, the president, the former president in in recent years. Like they're, they're going to fight it. They're not just going to say, cool, here's every email that anyone's ever sent from an, an NFL account. It doesn't work that way. That's not that's not how the law works. you got to bear that in mind. All right, uh, quickly, we'll do like a one-minute version of Would You Rather Wednesday. It's brought to you by Underdog Fantasy Football. Of course, uh, you use the code PRESSBOX when you make your first deposit at Underdog Fantasy Football, and we'll match it up to $100. They've got uh, one more football game for you to play, then they'll have basketball and hockey, and I know things look a little bit bleaker after yesterday's conversations, but hopefully there'll still be some baseball at some point, and uh, when there is, you'll be able to play that on Underdog as well, underdogfantasy.com. All right, the three scenarios for Would You Rather Wednesday. Number one, you're a Bengals fan. Would you rather, right now, the cheapest get-in ticket for the Super Bowl is $6,000. That's the cheapest you can get in to sit in the very top of the upper deck. You got to spend $6,000 for a ticket. You got to play for your flight, hotel, everything in L.A., of course, is vastly more expensive than it would be if, say, the Super Bowl were in Indianapolis. This is going to cost you well into five figures just to get in. Would you rather do all of that to go watch your team lose or just have them lose in the AFC Championship game. This is assuming I have 6 grand. You're going you're you're cashing in everything. You're cashing in, you're making a once in a lifetime trip. And somebody not? says I'll, I'll go to the Super Bowl just to see your team lose. Uh, it, I'll never go to another Super Bowl ever again. <sighs> if it's a once in a lifetime thing, I've been to a Super Bowl, I got to watch my team play in the Super Bowl. Even if they lose, it's going to suck. It's going to be mm-hmm. gut-wrenching. But at least they were there, and I got to see it. More more people have said that than the other, but it's split. It's still somewhat split. Uh, number two, of course, uh, as we were talking about, Dan Snyder and stupid life. God, that was all so bad. Uh, would you rather – you're a Washington – you're a lifelong Washington fan. Would you rather it be the Commanders or just have stuck with the Washington football team? Washington football team. Everybody's in agreement on that. The commanders is stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. stupid. It's a yeah. dumb name. And number three, uh, would you rather uh, – Eric DaCosta is going to allow you, Paul Valley, to make any three decisions that you want for the Baltimore Ravens if – I'm sure you saw the story – if you agree to eat nothing – the only meat you can eat between now and the start of football season is Golden Corral steak, which, of course, caused a, a fracas and an all-out brawl last week at a Pennsylvania restaurant. Uh, or – no, I'll, I'll just go ahead and trust Eric DaCosta. The only move I desperately want them to make is deciding to Tyron Matthew to play safety for him. And I'd certainly enjoy the, having Tyron Matthew on my football team. That's the only thing I want them to do. And I, I, I'm i a meat lover. I could not eat Golden Corral steak all year. So right. just just let EDC do his thing. More more people uh, leaning that way. More people leaning that way. All right, continue to give me your response to Zach Glenn Clark Radio on Twitter. Tidbit is brought to you today by the Stand the Fan Variety Hour. If you missed their baseball roundtable show on Monday, uh, it was a great sort of chat about everything facing the game at the moment. It's available right now. Facebook.com slash Pressbox Sports. Click on the videos tab or to PressBoxOnline.com slash video. 
Yesterday, Tom Brady announced his retirement from the game of football. He ends his career as the NFL's all-time leader in passing yards and touchdowns. He also ends his career as the NFL's all-time leader in touchdown passes after the age of 40 with 191, more than 130 more than the next closest player. Including Brady, six quarterbacks have thrown 20 or more touchdowns after the age of 40, not in a season for their career after the age of 40. Who are the other five? Uh, Steve, which, uh, Steve DeBerg? No. Steve Bono? No, there's no Steves. Oh, I'm a little surprised by that. Um, uh, after the age of 40, after the age of 40, how about, God, who else played after 40? Fran Tarkenton, did he play after 40? He there's may have, but he's not on this list. Um, Drew Brees. Drew Brees, number one, or number two, overall, 57. Oh, Warren Moon, for sure, right? Warren Moon, number three, uh, on the list of the next five, with 37. Um, Brett Favre. Brett Favre, 41. Okay. You have two guys left, they threw, they both threw for 24. Ah, well, now if, now that you say that, I know exactly who they are. Nailed it. That was that was the, the tidbit I was looking for. Thank you. Um, who else made it to 40? Who else made it to 40? 40 or 40 to 40? Drew Bledsoe? No. Vinny Testaverde? Vinny Testaverde, 24. And one more guy who is, like, known for playing in his 40s. One other guy who is known for playing in his 40s. How recent? Not recent at all. Not recent. Played 140 games in this sport. Oh, uh, George Blanda. George, yeah, Blanda. George Blanda, 24. All right, very good. All right, uh, tubular quickly. Um, tonight, uh, here's what's coming up totally tubular-wise. It's brought to you by Live Casino and Hotel. Of course, if you still want a spot for the big game, email events at sportssocialmd.com. Uh, Army Loyola at 7, Navy Lehigh at 7, UMBC Albany at 7. They're all on ESPN+. Plus. The rest of the college hoops, find at glennclarkradio.com. World Cup qualifier, Honduras and the United States, 7.30 on FS1. Must win out in Minnesota. Uh, NBC Sports Washington Wizards, Sixers at 7, ESPN Grizzlies, Knicks at 7.30, Nuggets Jazz at 10, TNT Oilers Capitals at 7, Wild Blackhawks at 9.30. And uh, the Olympics are officially underway. They actually started this morning. And tonight on uh, USA, you can watch some mixed doubles curling at 8 o'clock and 1.30 a.m., but the Olympics officially underway tonight on the USA Network. Anything non-sports-wise, just give me one or, or so highlights. Uh, Pam and Tommy series. Oh, that's right, on Hulu. Hulu. Yeah. Is tonight. That's a big one. Then Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators is on Jimmy uh, Kimmel Live tonight. That's uh, Sebastian Stan playing Tommy Lee and Lily James playing Pamela Anderson. That is correct. All right, very good. Thanks today to uh, Professor Robert Bolin. Thanks also to Drew Forrester and to Kamar Aiken. We'll get all that up in the greatest hits section of the Archives. tab at glennclarkradio.com. Stuff and things tomorrow. We don't have time. we got to move on. Um, thanks, everybody, at Pressbox, all of our great sponsors and partners, CCBC, Glory Days Grill, Royal Farms, Exxon Mobil, Great Eights Memorabilia, Live Casino and Hotel, Underdog Fantasy Football, Duffy's Garage and Baldwin, Window Depot, your local Toyota dealer, and buyatoyota.com, my bookie, and Blue Line Canine. Thanks to Paul Valley. Follow him on Twitter at Paul Valley the Third. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Glenn Clark Radio. If you're new to this, this is just like when we do this on Thursdays for the Fantasy Show. If you're with us on audio, do nothing. If you're with us on video, give us a minute and go back to either facebook.com slash pressboxsports or youtube.com slash pressboxonline, and we'll be back with you for Simply the Bets. That's next.